Welcome to a short webinar on how to use Purple Mash on the iPads with your class. I'm going to share a handful of tips and tricks for managing Purple Mash on the iPad, including looking at managing and printing work. We're currently looking at Purple Mash on my iPad screen, and you'll see if you look towards the top right that I'm logged in. We're going to start by looking at how children can easily get onto Purple Mash on the iPads, and then how to keep them on it once they're there. I'm going to tap on Admin, and then quick login shortcuts. You'll see I have a shortcut for Purple Mash and a shortcut for Mini Mash. And I'm just going to select all and copy the Purple Mash shortcut. I'm now going to close this window and log out of Purple Mash. And then I'm going to paste that link into the top browser bar. You'll see now that I'm logged in as guest. And it's easy for children to log in by tapping the login button towards the top right and selecting their class and then their name from the list. They can now enter their password, which in this case is a picture password, monkey dog, and then click on OK. If you'd like help setting up picture passwords for your class, just get in touch and we'd be happy to help. It was easy enough to log in, so now I'd like to add that quick login link to the iPad home screen so it's easy for the children to get there. I've logged out again now, and I'm logged back in as the guest. I'll now tap this box at the top, the square with the upwards arrow, and if I scroll through the options at the bottom, I'm looking for Add to Home Screen. If I tap Add to Home Screen, I can now shorten the name. Once I've named my link, I can click on Add, and that will add it to my home screen. Here it looks like an app, and I can tap and hold it down to then move it to where I'd like. And I'm going to put it on the bottom bar here, because then it will appear no matter which home screen page I'm on. I'm going to access Purple Mash on the iPad now by tapping on the Purple Mash app. To the top right I'm going to log in, but this time I don't want to log in as a pupil, I want to log in as a teacher. I can select either I know my username and email and log in with my Purple Mash details, or I can log out guest and that will take me to the home page for my portal. I use the Office 365 login button because I've got an Office 365 account. We've also got a button that links with your Google login if you use Gmail. If you'd like us to switch these buttons on for you, please just do get in touch and we'll help you. I'm going to tap Office 365 Login and that will log me straight into Purple Mash. From here, I'm going to go to Admin and back to Quick Login Shortcuts. And this time I'm going to select the Mini Mash shortcut, select it, highlight it, copy it, and then come out of here and in the same way, log out and then paste it into my browser's top bar. I'm now in Minimash as a guest, and I can again use that box with the arrow pointing up to add that to the home screen. I can log into Minimash by tapping on the logo. I'm going to come out of Minimash now and go back into Purple Mash. Once children are in either Purple Mash or Minimash, we usually want them to stay there. If I tap the home button on my iPad and come back to the home screen, I can tap Settings to set up something called Guided Access. Guided Access can be found if you scroll down under General and under Accessibility. If I scroll down here, you'll see the options for Guided Access and you can switch it off or on at any time. When you switch Guided Access on, if you scroll down, you'll see the option to add a passcode and I can use this to set my Guided Access passcode, simply four digits in this case. If I come out of that, I've also got options for time limits, accessibility shortcuts and auto locks. Now I've switched guided access on, if I tap on the iPad home screen to come back and enter Purple Mash. I now have the option to triple click the home button and guided access will start. If I triple click again, I enter a passcode and guided access will finish. I can either resume top right or end top left. If I resume, once I'm in guided access, I cannot tap the iPad's home button and escape from the app. It will tell me as you'll see at the top that guided access is enabled. I'm now going to triple click and end guided access. But before I do, to the bottom left you'll see options. And if I tap options, I have the option to alter any of these things, including set a time limit. I can set a time limit for a number of minutes or hours, and after that amount of time in the application, the iPad will lock out. 
and you'll need to put your passcode in to resume. For now I'm going to end. I'm now logged back in as me and I'd like to explore some of the tools and apps that work brilliantly on the iPad. You'll notice we've been using Safari to load Purple Mash and it looks very similar to it does on the computers. I can explore using the navigation buttons by clicking on tools, use the home page button and explore through to the different subject areas. I've tapped art and if I scroll down I'll see lots of paint projects as well as the art tools at the top. A lot of our tools incorporate the art and painting tools and it's very easy for the children to use their fingers or their iPad pens to draw on the iPad. I'm going to click on To Animate at the beginning of this one and launch the app. Some of you may be familiar with To Animate. When it loads you've got the four frames at the top. You've got the main work area and then you've got the paint tools on the left hand side. Don't forget there are two tabs here. I want to talk about the toolbar across the top. Because the iPad screen is slightly smaller, you may notice that there's a button missing. This does happen sometimes within the tools on the iPad, and in this case it's the camera button. And even though it's not there, it is still functional within the app. If I click on the background button at the top, the tree and the sun, it will load up our backgrounds, and you'll notice at the bottom you've got Get Photo, Choose File or Paint. If I tap Get Photo, that will work exactly like the camera button at the top on the laptop or the computer. If I just tap back out into this background's dialog box, this is the same background dialog box that you'll see in To Create a Story and To Code and To Go and lots of other applications. I'm going to tap on Get Photo, where I have the option of using the iPad camera to take a photograph or selecting one from a photo library or browsing. In this instance, I'm going to select Photo Library and I'm going to choose a photo from the gallery that I could use as a background. If I select one and click on Done at the top, I have the option of that photograph being the background for all frames or just the frame I'm currently working on. If I cancel out of this and I go back in to add a background and get a photo and from the photo library again, I'm this time going to select several photographs from the library and click on Done. What this will do is it will take each of those photographs and put one in each frame of my animation. When I press play at the top, this will knit them together into a little animation. I'd like to talk a little now about saving and printing, so I'm going to tap on the save icon, the third from the left at the top. Once I've done this I'm going to pop a name in for my animation, and I'm going to make sure it's saved in the My Work folder. Every user for Purple Mash has their own My Work folder. When a user returns to Purple Mash, they can tap on the Work folder at the top, and as long as the My Work folder on the left is selected, all of their recent work will be here on the right hand side. Any work for a class will be within the class section and here you'll see shared folders for each of the classes. If I tap on the class name, I'll expand Rens, and the pupil folder, I can have a look at each child's My Work folder and see the work that they've been doing. Saving work in Purple Mash into the work folder is extremely helpful when you're using iPads because it means if a child picks up a different iPad in the next lesson, they can open up Purple Mash and log in and find the work they were working on the last lesson. We're going to go on to talk a little about printing, so I'm going to select a file I've made earlier and open it up. Now it's open I'm going to click the print button at the top, which is about the fifth along from the left at the top. It'll ask me if I want to print and I'll click on OK. And if you're used to using Purple Mash, you'll realise that in most areas we generate a PDF for printing and this can be sent via AirPrint to your printer. If I click on Open PDF to print, at the top there's a little square box with an arrow coming out of the top, and if I click on that and scroll across at the bottom, I should be able to see Print, and that will then send to the printer. We know it can be a challenge to get each child to print one copy of their work, so we've built a handy feature into Purple Mash called To-Dos. To-Dos can be set from each application, if I select Art, for example, and we'll choose an Animals Paint project, and I'm going to select Dinosaur, I can click on Set to Do at this point, and that will allow me to set that piece of work for all of the children in my class. Once the children have done their work in a To Do, you can access it via the To Do's area. I'm now in Purple Mash on my computer and not on my iPad. I can go to the To Do's area at the top and see the To Do I set earlier. If I click on View Folder, I'm taken straight to a folder in the work area with the children's work in it. I'm going to hover over Daniel's work and click on Add a Comment. From here, I can see the work he's done and I can add the comment. Great work. 
and click on Save and Next. This will load Corey's work and I can comment on Corey's as well. And save. Once I've commented on the children's work, I can click on the first and hold down Shift and click on the last. Or I can click on the first and the ones I want to print and hold down Control and select the others. Once I have done this, I can click on Print and check this Include Comments and File Details box. Now when I press Print, it will generate me one PDF with each of the children's work in. You'll notice at the top there's some information about the file, including the children's name, the date they did it, and the comments you made. It is much easier to get the children to do the work on the iPads as a to-do, and then come in on a computer or laptop and select it all and print it as one document, than it is to try and get all the children to print individually. The final thing I want to talk about is collaboration, because it is really easy and effective on an iPad. I'm going to first tap on Tools at the top here, and point out on the right that we've got to investigate, and on the left that we've got to write, and to connect. In this session I want to talk about 2Connect, so I'm going to launch the app. 2Connect is a fantastic mind mapping tool, and I'm just going to launch Story Planner so you can see what it looks like if you haven't used it before. Here you've got a variety of different options, and I can tap on the background and pop in a word to add to the mind map. There we go. Once a word has been added, I can tap on it and move it around, or I can tap in other areas and link them up. I can also tap on the words I have added and click on the edit pen above them. Here I can change the colour of the bubble and add pictures, sounds, notes and links etc. If I click on OK, I'll be taken back to the mind map. I have now set up a new document about the weather. Towards the top of the screen you'll see a little button that looks like a Wi-Fi symbol crossed out and when you tap on that it'll prompt you to save the document to a shared folder to start collaborating. When I select OK, I can select my class folder because that is a shared folder and type in a name for the document. We'll pop weather into there and click on save. Now I've saved that into a shared folder, that button's gone green and that means other members of the class can come in and add words and as they add them they will appear live on this document. You can see who has added which bubble by tapping on it and then selecting the edit pen and clicking on history towards the bottom left of the dialog box. That concludes our Purple Mash webinar for today and I'd like to finish by tapping on teachers and scrolling down. Here you'll find a series of buttons for accessing professional development and we offer many sessions and courses from MASH meets and cluster sessions to individual on-site sessions for your members of staff. Please do contact us if you are interested in any of these. If I just scroll to the bottom of Teachers, you'll also find a PDF called Using Purple Mash on Tablets. If I tap on Help at the top, there is also a To-Dos Guide with more information on setting and using To-Dos. Thank you very much for watching and don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any further questions.